So nobody has a crystal ball. Absolutely nobody knows what's gonna be happening today, tomorrow, next week, or even years from now. And sure, we can make educated decisions based on historical facts, but no one truly knows how this whole thing's gonna play out. But there is one guarantee. <laughs> So we know that in this life, nothing is for sure. And the only constant since the beginning of time has been change. Now the media does this fantastic job at creating clickbait headlines. Actually, I should probably take a page out of their book because these YouTube videos might get more views. Now, speaking of which, if you want to help this little channel get more exposure, I would be forever grateful. Please hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. It really helps this little channel chug along and grow. But back to what I was saying. Now everyone from Aunt Becky, to the media, to cousin Fred, to your neighbor, to the grocer, to the vet, all have an opinion on real estate, which is great. I love a good conversation about the market. Whether it's chatting about home prices or rising interest rates, it really tends to be a spicy topic of conversation. Now, before I get into my little rant here, I just want to preface this with saying that nothing is forever and things change. And if you're considering making a move or are wondering if you should hold off on that dream, realize that the real estate market is always evolving and shifting. Now, if we look back at historical values and where we were even a few short years ago to where we are today, it looks different. Now, real estate is cyclical. For those that remember 2016, 2017, prices were accelerating so fast that, and everyone was saying how prices back then weren't sustainable, and it was actually mind blowing to think that home values could go up anymore. But before you come at me, I'm not suggesting that values only go up, 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 up. I always say this, that the market will always ebb and flow, but the long-term trajectory has been upwards keyword being long-term. Now making a long-term decision that's gonna impact your future based on a short-term outlook could be really, how do I say this politely, silly? Now the market can't be or shouldn't be painted with one brush. The answer to how's the market shouldn't be this blanket statement of, oh man, the market is so hot right now, it's only going up, or oh, it's kind of a bad time to sell or buy right now. The real and probably not so exciting answer is it really depends and it depends on the individual. Now I had a family last week reach out to me who were interested in selling a home and moving up from their semi-detached to a detached home as prices are coming down because they thought they seen an opportunity. But after reviewing their situation, they had just purchased within the last 18 months and they were relying on the equity of their home, of their current home, to make that jump. And so in my opinion, it wasn't the best time for them to go onto the market. Now home prices and sales have definitely dropped when compared to the month over month data, but year over year home prices are up in the double digits year to date. Who does this really help and who does this hurt? And if you've been in your home for a good chunk of time and you're looking to upsize, now is likely a good time to explore some opportunities because the current market could be working in your favor. So here's how. Now let's say that you're trying to purchase a home that cost a million bucks and your home was worth 800,000. Now that's a $200,000 difference. Now since the peak of the market in February, many parts of the GTA have seen a 20% price drop. Now that $1 million home could go down to $800,000 and your home could be worth $640,000. So now that price difference that was $200,000 is now $160,000. So to all my first time home buyers out there, if you've been considering getting into the market recently but were priced out before, well, home values have come down, as I mentioned, in many parts of the GTA by 20, even sometimes 25%. But you're probably saying, well, Alice, interest rates are rising. How does this help me? Well, number one, the market is favoring buyers right now. A home that was in a desirable area, renovated, showed A++++, was likely trading for north of a million in the suburbs. Now that same house is trading in the 850 to 900,000. Number two, buying in a down market allows you to make more thoughtful and educated decisions and actually submit offers with conditions as opposed to making firm offers out of fear of missing out. Number three, buying that A++ home today at a discounted price will only propel your success for the future because you've seen that it once has fetched north of a million and will likely get there again. Number four, interest rates will come down and when they do, demand will be stimulated again then there will be buyers that they're looking for your home and your home value will go up. And then 
as they do, you can refinance and lower that amount. And number five, when home values go up, your value or price category will be at a point where a lot of people will be comfortable to shop in. We've seen this happen during the pandemic. About 85% of the market in the suburbs was purchasing homes between that $1 million to $1.2 million mark. Now, I heard Taylor Hack from Hack & Co. Um, the other day say this in one of his Instagram posts says interest rates are changing and we know that it's going to impact things like how much you qualify for and what your monthly payment's going to be but if the decrease in home prices won't overcome the rise in interest rates then you're going to be paying more for a lesser house but instead of paying the market you're going to be paying the bank and the bank doesn't give you your money back. Now, who is this going to hurt? There are still some sellers out there who have some pressure behind their decision to sell, unfortunately, and maybe they're in a financially tough spot or something in their life has suddenly changed, so they need to get out pronto. Now, this is going to hurt those who are not selling or who are selling and not purchasing their next property. And to those sellers, I would say get very super strategic about your plan and super realistic about the price so that we don't continue to market or to ride the market down if prices continue to drop. Now, understanding buyer's mentality, their pain points, their want for HGTV quality homes, having a sharp pricing strategy and ensuring that you're reducing any sort of negative feedback within your control is absolutely paramount in any market, especially this market if you wanna win. Now, depending on how long you've been living in a home and you've likely had a good chunk of equity to move up to the next property, if we look at a year to date, year over year figure, home prices are still up 16 to 20%. Does it suck that you're not getting what your neighbor got at the beginning of the year? Of course, I understand. But remember that that money was technically never yours to begin with because you weren't selling at that time. Now, I just wanna leave you with this final last thought. If you're looking to buy, sell, purchase an investment property, a cottage, whatever it is, sit down with your mortgage broker and realtor first. Find out exactly what you qualify for, see what your options are and have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C and measure it against your lifestyle. If the market only goes up 3%, are you going to be okay? If it goes down 10%, how is that going to impact you? Do you see yourself staying in this home or this property for three to five years? Do you see your income being the same or higher down the line? You get where I'm going. And I don't think in the moment people feel 100% sure that this is the perfect time for them to be buying or selling having that hesitation is absolutely normal but when the market is good meaning low rates lots of demand prices are rising everyone's thinking that the cost is too high and when there's pullback people are too fearful to be buying and capitalizing on an opportunity now everyone would obviously love to buy low and sell high but that's not always the greatest strategy so if you have any questions or concerns about the market or just want to chat about real estate, use the Calendly link below to book a time that is convenient for you. Until then, ciao for now and I'll catch you on the next one. Have a beautiful summer.